Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and it's finally time for us to do our uh, team draft analysis for the LBA of Season 6. Now, I actually have a special treat because doing the draft analysis with me today is my co-coach, Aiden. So, Aiden, say hello, please. G'day. I feel, I feel honored to be called a special treat, so there you go. <laughs> uh, he's actually been phenomenally helpful in uh, not only helping me prepare for league matches, especially when I've been too strapped for time and breeding, but he actually helped, he, I, I told him to tell me what he wanted me to draft for the OBA season, and of course I'll be the one playing, but uh, I just thought it'd be really, really fun to kind of mix it up and play in this way. And then we could also go through the draft, um, kind of our decisions and how we adjusted when we were getting sniped and things like that. Uh, so actually, Round one, um, thanks a lot to uh, Skyrunner, of course, for sniping us in round one. Our original plan yeah. was to draft Mega Charizard X, and you can see in the league table that I have on the screen there, that went. That was the very first pick. Like, you can't get more sniped than that. Yeah, so uh, that was a bloody big loss. Yeah, so what, uh, what kind of made you... I think Dragonite is a really strong first pick. Mm -hmm. uh, in a league format, why, what made you like him so much overall? Um, first of all, I was looking at the fact that, you know, we need a we need a Zardex replacement, so that's, you know, the Dragon Stab. It's something, you know, powerful it can set up. Um, I do like its versatility in terms of where, how it can go defensive or offensive, rather than, or whether that's special or physical and all that stuff. I don't know, it's a really good mod in general. I agree. And I also just like a little bit of the unpredictability. Uh, it that's gets fun. a lot of good coverage. Yeah, and I think a lot of people sleep on that. I don't really see Dragonite that often in league formats. Like, and I, I feel like I'm kind of the, the resident. Um, oh yeah, he's in that league. He's in that league. He's in that league. So I feel like I've watched enough <laughs> to see it, but I you don't see him that often. No, um, I I wouldn't even have a clue why. I mean, you know, it's, it's good. Yeah. You know, but that just means yeah, we have yeah. a chance to surprise people. I would say. That's exactly right. Uh, speaking of surprises, I was actually surprised with round two that Mammal Swine didn't go earlier than it did. Uh, yeah, I think that was right. a steal. Yeah, it's typically uh, you know excellent in the league format, just not not by uh, virtue of versatility, but because of you know what it is, its raw power, even though it's move pool small. And it also was a nice defensive choice because it removes one of the things that directly dra threatens Dragonite too. So that's right. That uh, there's a lot to be said for defensive picks. It's kind of like in the um, the last season of the I think it was the last season of the ILL. Someone drafted Kingdra even though he didn't have rain, and that stopped the, another player from getting uh, a nice rain with swim sweeper. So it's good to keep those yeah. in mind. Uh, it's a good cockblock pick. Yep. Um, in round three, Cobalion. That and this is kind of where our draft kind of fell much more into what we planned, even though we got sniped so hard on round one. But those first two rounds are really important, especially for a snake yeah. draft. Uh, and Cobalion is one of the few legendary Pokemon that I just have plenty of because I was able to get it in black and white and black and white too. So, uh, also fairly versatile between the ability to support or rocks, great lead or anti lead, and it can That's even fine. go special. Um, so, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see Cobalion that often either. No, um, I think it might just be because, you know, you look at it and uh, it's it's fairly one, two dimensional, whether you're going fast support or uh, offensive, but I think it's overlooked as an offensive mod because, uh, you know, it's it's stab combination, it's big, it allows it to take on a lot of things which threaten dragon types. I agree. And also, uh, steel type for fairies kind of That's necessary in league format. <laughs> I, mean, I think yeah, almost all the fairies are gone in the first three rounds for the most part, except for maybe Guard of and Floor just, yeah. It's kind of ridiculous, but that's what you expect in league format anyway. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants to pick the good ones, don't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, round four, we went with Feraligator. That was... Originally think... Starmie. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We got sniped on Starby in round three. Uh, right after we picked um, Mammal Swine. So, once again, kind of had to, to regroup, but I really like ending up with uh, For Alligator. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's great. That's not bad at all. It gives us more priority. Uh, yeah. 
like you said, I think you mentioned before, this between Feraliator and Dragonite, a lot of offensive pressure. A dual DD call, yeah. Yeah, which uh, it's like double dragons, but it, you're playing with Billy and Jimmy instead of the, <laughs> I don't know, instead of a literal dragon. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. I yeah. just like double. I like double dragons. I guess. Um, yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> We need a toad for uh, battle toads and double dragons. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we then picked up Whimsicott and Aromatisse back to back. Um, Is which two fairies? Nonsense. I was again surprised we got those when we did. I feel like uh, a lot of the uh, well, let's see here in the first three rounds, um, Togekiss, Sylveon. Uh, Mega Altaria, all gone in the first three rounds, along Cyclophable. Mm -hmm. And then in round four, no fairies were chosen in round four. So that was... Out of the ordinary. Very much so. And then we got both of those back to back. And then after that, it's like people realized that they needed to get their fairies. Because you see Florges yeah. and Gardevoir dropping after that. So I feel like we got those at just the right time. Uh, I think so, yeah. With with both offering kind of different things, Whimsicott gives you the prankster support, um, alongside just a speedy, uh, possibly offensive Pokemon if you want to use it that way. Whereas Aromatisse is much more bulky and slow. But that's right. Yeah. It's uh. Do you think we could have done anything better in those two slots? Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, Aromatisse is maybe our best option if we're going Trick Room. Uh, it's also bulkier than Clefable in terms of stats, but it does suffer in, in uh, both move pool and abilities. While it can't be taunted, it doesn't have anything like Magic Guard or Unaware, so it's a decent pick. And Whimsicott, um, I think uh, that topping off the Fairy Dragon Steel Core as well as the Firewater Grass Core, I think it synergizes really well with what we already had. And it provides, you know, good support for what we need. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, the next couple of picks were kind of just all fun picks for me. Honestly, it was... We kind of got our core down. <laughs> and for me, it was just like, well, what's what's going to be cool to use? And Arceus was a fantastic pick by you. I haven't Dang. used that Pokemon since 5th gen, but I think that's that and Porygon Z are the two Pokemon I'm most excited to use on our team. Uh, yeah. Does people sleep on Archaeops? Even though it has Defeatist, there's a reason it has Defeatist. Like, it hits really hard before the Defeatist yeah, no, kicks in. On both sides of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was a toss-up between that and Aerodactyl originally, but I took uh, Archaeops uh, with, uh, due to its ability you know, to hit a lot harder, uh, better utility, and also Defog, which since you, know, you breed yours in-game, uh, yeah. we can't get uh, Defog Arrow. Yep, kind of... Uh... A lot of people say I'm handicapping myself when I do that, but I think it makes things a lot more fun. That's just yeah, me. no, I agree. I'll do the same thing. Yeah. See, as uh, one of my the original people I watched on YouTube when I first started uploading, A, amazing. Breeders do it better. <laughs> so we're going to stick by That's that. Exactly right. uh, and then after Archaeops, we had Garbodor. Um, I'd like to point out in the same round that Garbodor was chosen, uh, that's the same round as Crobat, Chandelure, Lucario, Zapdos, Mandibuzz, Gudra, Crocodile, Suicune, Cloyster, and Duo Blade. Uh, so possibly the most anti-tier choice. That that was almost completely UU. <laughs> <that entire. laughs> that and awesome. then here we are with Garbodor. Because <laughs> <laughs> originally that was uh, Scolopede, which would have been you know a U U O U P. Yeah. But uh, yeah, now we got snopped on that one. Unfortunately. Yeah, it was a toss-up between Garboda and Arbok. probably either Muck or an Arbok, but I think Garboda gives us probably the best fairy switch in. Um, it also has a little more utility in, in both spikes. Uh, hits a lot harder than the others. Um, or maybe not Muck, but, you know, hits harder than Arbok. And, uh, yeah, no, it's a cool mod. I like yeah. it. It's not trash. I mean, it is trash, but it's not <laughs> trash. Uh and Garbodor is another Pokemon that I actually have a couple bred up already, so that kind of alleviates that too, which is nice. That's good. Uh, Garbodor actually gets some weird um, coverage moves that I think a lot of people don't necessarily realize. Alongside mm -hmm. uh, uh, the weak armor ability, which if you switch it in at the right time can allow him to, to pick up some surprise KOs because now suddenly he's faster. So, yeah. uh, Mono Poison is pretty good typing. Yeah, it is. 
Um, one of my favorite, I think Porygon Z is my favorite normal type overall, so I yeah, was very yeah. happy to choose that. I did pick uh, Pori Z because I was looking for a normal type, but also something that didn't compound uh, the physical spectrum of things. It's because, you know, we were looking a little weak to things like, uh, I don't know, bulky steels, bulky grounds, depending on, you know, what they are. And yeah. um, I don't know, I just think it's a it's an interesting pick. I don't see it a lot, and I wanted to see it because I think it has potential. And that, and Porygon Z also uh, fills in that little niche of versatility on this end, on the special end, because we had the good versatility on the physical. But mm -hmm. uh, as far as special attackers go, we didn't really have anything where, well, that can go agility or nasty plot or scarf or specs or substitute yeah. or download or trait. It can do a lot of different uh, roles, which I really like. Plus, it, it wiggles all over the place on the battlefield when it's attacking, and that's I just like that <laughs> animation. Wow. Uh, something uh, something interesting I saw uh, the other day. I was looking at you know some of the sets, uh, some of the stats, and with I think minimal investment, you can two it KO Blissey uh, with return after a download boost, which is pretty fun. That's so, and and wouldn't you know, Blissey was chosen right after Porygon Z on the table, so that might be fated <laughs> to happen. To uh, normal types back to that. Yeah, and and I hate Blissey, so by all means, let's let's, oh, let, yeah, let's no. make that happen. That uh, view is shared. In the last round, um, a couple of surprises in the last round. I was very surprised to see choices like uh, Crawdont, uh, Mega Gyarados, and Politoed all it's in the very so last round. Yeah, yeah. And Snarl, yeah. Mega Gyarados. Weird. Yeah. It's it's and and there are a lot of teams choosing Pokemon, so it's weird that they lasted that long. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just didn't synergize with any people's original decisions. Yeah. I know. I looked. At uh, in place of Dragonite, but I think the water on top of you know what we already had, we just needed a dragon. So, but yeah, we had to drop that. But Pontiard, uh, again with a very unconventional pick, but I, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people just see, oh, it's an NFE Pokemon, it's not fully evolved, and they yeah. kind of write it off when it's a huge yeah. threat in lower tiers. Just not That's as cool. much as Bisharp, of course, but it's it's a pretty big threat. Like, what made you choose that? Yeah. Outside of, like, for example, uh, Arbok gets Sucker Punch too, so there's a there's a difference in synergy mm -hmm. there for sure. Uh, so uh, what drew me to Pawniard is the fact that, or uh, uh, well, three main points: uh, A, we were lacking a Dark Type; B, we were lacking a strong priority outside of maybe Extreme Speed on Dragonite. And um, I don't know, I just I, I just like Pawniard. It's a bit of a joke pick, but like you said, you know, people can forget about it and turn around the bottom in the ass in the end. <laughs> That's and it. Yeah, uh, with. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, with its, uh, you know, the the typing that it has is phenomenal, and you know, you can see that with Bishop in OU, um, you know, even though it has that four times weakness and it's weak to ground and all that, uh, it has so many resistances that it can afford to occasionally come in on weaker moves if it's holding Eviolite. Which does make it bulkier than Bisharp, so why not? That's right. It does. Didn't even think about that. Which is weird. The pawn is mm -hmm. better than the bishop. But... <laughs> well, um... Oh, sorry. No, uh, I, and I, at the end of the day, um, the fr uh, I per season 5 was my first season in the LBA. Uh, yep. And I, I really think, uh, overall, I enjoyed playing it, but I just ran mm -hmm. into some really bad hacks runs near the end there, which which was yeah. just so unfortunate so I'm really looking forward to minimizing the chances of hacks to ruin things uh, similar to how in the ILL I was running flamethrower on my Charizard a lot over fire blast because if I can use a modest one and not miss and don't have to worry about that chance happening I'd rather go with that That's right. so I, I really like this team because there aren't a lot of Pokemon that rely on moves that can miss a lot or, or relying on drops or that type of thing so this is much yep. more in line with uh, with kind of what I wanted to do in the LBA this season. So I'm excited about our draft. It's going to be interesting. Thanks, man. Uh, if you had to pick out two teams, maybe, at least one, that you're that are going to be a problem for our team, what, who do you have your eye on there? Uh, well, looking at the fact that our team uh, is quite weak to uh, fire types that can be... Uh, What's his name? Dragonite, and also strong fairy types. Uh, I'm probably most scared of uh, Skyrender's team. Uh, you know, with 
Zardex and all that. And um, also, whoever has the Mega Gardevoir team, who's that? Uh, the Dungan and Typhlosions. So, Ooh. yeah, they're looking pretty scary to me. Both of those, yeah. And the other one that I was actually a little bit uh, apprehensive about was the uh, Lati Azumarill. Because they, between Azumarill, Caesar, and Talonflame, that's like overpowering priority. Yeah, um, no, they're very strong ones. And then, of course, we have two fairies, and and just having to go up against Caesar might be uh, a little bit of a pain. But um, yeah, I, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting overall. Um, yeah. All right. Well, guys, that's gonna do it for this team draft analysis. Of course, our first week battle is up against the. Um, uh, I'm blinking on names here. It's up against. Uh, is it the uh, Chicago Brambles? That's right. I, I I think I blocked out in my brain how awesome it is when someone chooses Mega Venusaur. So I have to go up against my favorite Pokemon. Not not fun there. But we'll be doing a team analysis for that it's gonna be. in a separate video. So look forward to that. And thank you very much, Aiden, for sitting in with me on this draft analysis. Uh, if you guys mm -hmm. want, of course, he is on Twitter, so you can go follow him there. And I will leave his Twitter link in the description for the video. So say goodbye, sir, and we'll we'll be off. I'll catch you later. All right. Later, guys.